That's right, the rack is back in action, and this is the story of how we got there. Welcome back to the Serial Port for part three of our Cobalt Rack series. Our rack is now in a fully restored state and ready to dish out web pages for another two decades. Maybe. In our previous installments, we rescued this dusty, bug-ridden Rack 3 that hadn't been powered on for over a decade and restored the hardware back to its former glory. Today, we will be completing the last part of that restoration, the software. And we also have a big announcement to share, so stay tuned until the end of the video. We've already seen the multiple reasons why Cobalt Racks were so popular and prevalent. After Sun Microsystems stopped development and support for the rack, the community sprang into action. From Blue Quartz to NetBSD and many others, there are now a large number of software options to choose from to keep these systems going. In our case, though, we wanted to experience the original, unadulterated version of the Cobalt Rack and get a glimpse of what it was like to set up these appliances all those years ago. We naturally turned towards the Internet Archive to see if we could find the original Restore CDs, and as luck would have it, there are two available. The first is version 1.1, and the second is 2.0. And the intended restore method is to connect the server directly to a PC's NIC using a crossover cable. From there, the PC would boot from the restore CD and the restoration process could be started. Our first attempt using a physical machine ended in failure. The Linux kernel in the restore CD was 2.0.36 and lacked hardware support for any NICs that we had on hand. And we tried quite a few. With that seemingly a dead end, we opted to try another approach by using a virtual machine. Using a modern Linux computer, we used the KeyMu emulator and bridged the virtual NIC in the emulator to the physical NIC in the PC, and then directly connected to the Rack's NIC as normal. And at first, the network boot process seemed like it was partially starting. We were seeing DHCP discover requests from the Rack and sending DHCP offers in response from the VM. However, the Rack didn't appear to respond to the DHCP offers and printed question marks on the console output instead. This indicated something besides no response, but we're not exactly sure what. It wasn't clear if the netboot was failing because of some issue in our VM environment, or if this restore CD only works on older rack hardware. If you recall, the first two versions of the rack used MIPS processors, which are risk-based, but on the rack three, the version we have, it uses a standard AMD K62 300 megahertz x86 CPU. So with the failure of the first restore CD version, we decided to try the later one, which was version 2.0. It specifically states in the documentation that it supports the later Rack 3 and 4 servers, so we had higher hopes this version would work. It was clear Cobalt learned some lessons from their earlier restore versions, as the welcome text was much more helpful, and even listed the supported NICs, which included PC MCIA NICs. We can imagine this support came in handy when restoring the racks in data centers or server farms, where laptops are easier to lug around. We used the same VM setup as with the first Restore CD, but this time, the rack was able to network boot. Our success was short-lived though, as the virtual machine NIC would crash or fail in some way during the initial part of the install process. After trying a few other options, we decided to go back to basics and used an old Celeron machine with a Linksys NIC as our restore host. This ended up being the winning combination. It's almost like the rack knew we were from the future and made us use period correct hardware. And now we can start the restore process. We encountered some issues along the way, of course, but ultimately it was successful and it took around 30 minutes in total. And let us know in the comments if you want to see the entire restore process from start to finish, and we can put up an unedited version in a separate video. With the restoration complete, we can see here that we are now running Cobalt Linux 6.0 and our kernel version is 2.2.14. In case you're wondering what storage device we installed this on, 
we actually used the original Seagate 20 gigabyte hard drive and then imaged it over to a compact flash card so we could use an IDE to CF adapter. This way we have the original hardware with the original software in safekeeping in case we ever need it again in the future. After configuring the IP address, we can now log into the web-based interface on the rack. We're greeted with this welcome page telling us that we have a rack 4, which is obviously incorrect, but that's to be expected since this is a later version of the rack software. From there, we go step by step through a setup wizard, and once that's done, we're greeted with a default home page on the rack. At this point, we can log into the server management console to add sites, users, and manage all of the hosting options. In other words, our server is ready to go, and that's all it took. You can see why these were so popular as the setup is dead simple once you're in the web interface. But now the question is, what are we going to do with our newly restored rack? Well, it would only be fitting to host a website on the internet, of course. And since the server will be live on the internet, and not to mention ancient by security standards, we have taken measures to ensure that if this machine is hacked, it's on an isolated network and is closed off from the rest of the serial port LAN. But now, the big moment. You, right now, yes you, can go to rack.serialport.org to check out our dinky little webpage that is being hosted by our fully restored Rack 3 server appliance. Throw a shout out on the guestbook if you'd like, but otherwise, with that done, our Rack restoration can now be considered complete. We've now got a fully operational server appliance live on the internet. But that's not quite the end of our Rack's journey. Our purpose here at the Serial Port is to preserve and share these relics of the past, and we have an exciting development to share with the community. Now that we've got our rack online, what better way to showcase it than to use it as it was intended? We'll be offering retro web hosting on the rack through our newly opened Patreon. Spots are limited, but you'll get your own custom subdomain on the rack so you too can bask in the glory of Y2K internet technology. And that's not all. We've got loads of other perks and benefits coming from custom email addresses, merch, and retro fan features where we will show off your retro rig in a video, and much, much more. Be sure to stay tuned to the Serial Port for details, and thank you again for coming along with us. See you next time.